hate painting myself with a uh, broad brush, but um, I am really fiscally conservative, and um, I guess I'm socially liberal. Socially liberal is the notion that government shouldn't be making decisions that I think only you and I should be making as individuals. I, I think I'm unique to, uh, I, I'm running for the Republican nomination for president, and I think I'm unique when it comes to the whole group in that um, I have been an entrepreneur my entire life. Uh, I've paid for everything that I've had in my life since I've been 17 years old. I started a one-man handyman business in Albuquerque in 1974 and actually grew that business to employ over a thousand people in 1994. I sold that business in 1999. Nobody lost their job and they're doing better than ever uh, right now. Uh, for me, money has always represented freedom and it doesn't take all that much money uh, to have your freedom. But that is something that I've accomplished and allows me to be here right now, doing what I want to do when I want to do it. Uh, I'm also an athlete. I've been an athlete my entire life. I still actively compete in uh, mountain biking and road biking and ski competitions. Um, I've summited Mount Everest. Um, I think you want somebody in this job who has the ability to hunker down and do what it takes. If there's one thing I've learned in my life, it's that no matter what you plan on <coughs> happening, it's not going to happen that way. Um, that things are going to get in your way, and it's how you deal with the things that get in your way that really determine whether or not you're going to be successful or, or not. I had never run for any office prior to running for governor of New Mexico. Uh, the Republican Party in New Mexico was very inclusive. What they said was, we like you, we like what you've got to say, we want you to be part of this process, we want you to be included in everything the Republican Party does in New Mexico, but you just need to know that you'll never get elected. That it's not possible to come from completely outside of politics and get elected governor of New Mexico in a state that's two to one Democrat. It's not going to happen, but we're going to make you a part of the process. Well, I got elected. And I got elected talking about smaller government. I got elected talking about the fact that government has the ability to create this level playing field, that it shouldn't be a, a government for the few, it should be about government for everybody. As governor of New Mexico, I did distinguish myself, I think, in several categories. One of them was, I may have vetoed more bills as governor of New Mexico than the other 49 governors in the country combined. I had vetoed 750 bills. I had thousands of line item vetoes as governor of New Mexico. And it made a difference. It made a difference when it came to billions of dollars worth of spending, it made a difference when it came to legislation that was going to tell you and I what I think were decisions that only belonged with you and I, not government. And I think government ends up criminalizing behavior by individuals that, you know what, it's a decision that belongs with you and I and, and not with government. And I think people are surprised to find out that the majority of legislation that passes is legislation that fixes prior law. So I signed plenty of legislation that fixed prior law, that because of prior law, um, that there were problems with that law. As President of the United States, I am making three promises, making more promises than that. But I will tell you, as Governor of New Mexico, I made very few promises, but I kept every single promise that I made. Running for President of the United States, I am making very few promises, but you can be the judge as to whether or not you think I'm going to follow through on the promises that I'm making. I am promising to submit a balanced budget to Congress in the year 2013. Now, I'm not promising to balance the budget, I'm promising to submit a balanced budget. Well, that's a 43% reduction in current government spending. And I make this promise because I believe that we're going to 
experience a monetary collapse unless we balance the budget. But that's the only defense that we have from this country literally not becoming a country anymore. So I'm promising to submit a balanced budget to Congress. I am promising to veto legislation by Congress where expenditures exceed revenue. I suggest to you that number one, if I'm elected President of the United States, what is that screaming to Congress? Isn't that screaming to Congress that we want a balanced budget? And I'm promising to veto legislation where expenses exceed revenue. So I'm going to have, uh, they're going to have to override my veto, which they will do. But I suggest to you that spending will be less in, that scenario, in this scenario that I'm laying out for you than any other possible scenario that you can come up with. So we're currently, we need to bring an end to printing money. That's what we need to bring an end to. Well, by just balancing the budget, we bring an end to printing money to cover ongoing uh, expenditures. But that won't stop and may not stop the government from having to print money to cover the rollover in $15 trillion worth of debt that we have. I'm also promising to advocate on the part of throwing out the entire federal tax system, throwing out the entire federal tax system and replacing it with the fair tax. If you haven't checked out the fair tax, check it out. Um, I am not doing this in a vacuum. Jeff Myron is my economics advisor. Jeff is a free market economist from Harvard which is a little bit of an oxymoron. <laughs> but Jeff also has a book on the bookshelves right now, Libertarianism, A through Z. But the fair tax, as the name implies, it's fair. It does away with all existing federal tax. Corporate tax, income tax, business tax, does away with withholdings, does away with the IRS and replaces it with a 23% consumption tax. Now you're going, oh, you're going to add 23% cost to all goods and services? No, because currently goods and services contain 23% worth of tax. So over a very short period of time, this will actually be cost neutral to what we're currently paying. It will also make American goods and services 23% more competitive when it comes to export. So that's really the answer when it comes to uh, China. When you talk about jobs and job creation, if in a zero corporate tax rate environment, the private sector does not create tens of millions of jobs, uh, I don't know under what scenario tens of millions of jobs get created. I talk about a 43% reduction in government spending. <coughs> that means Medicaid, that means Medicare, uh, and that means military spending. Doesn't mean Social Security. Social Security is not about cutting Social Security. <coughs> Social Security, very simply, is a system that needs to take in more money than what it pays out. Implementing the fair tax, that will no longer be a withholding from your payroll check. That will no longer be an employer <coughs> match for Social Security. Social Security will come out of the proceeds of the fair tax. But to make Social Security solvent into the future, raising the retirement age, uh, means testing, and means testing can be very fair. What did you pay in? What are you getting paid back out if your income exceeds a certain level? I think it can be very fair. You should get back the money that you've, that you've paid in Back to fair tax, it really is not an issue. And then you could change the escalator that's built into Social Security from the wage index uh, to the inflation rate. 